Are you sick and tired of listening to the same video over and over explaining Kitchener-Waterloo or the top five reasons you should move? Well, in this video, we're gonna break it down into exactly what Waterloo looks like from a map perspective. But in order to do that, we'll have to get in front of a computer. So let's go ahead inside. All right, we've made it to the office. I'm in front of my computer and I'm gonna take you through everything you need to know about Waterloo. I'm gonna go through absolutely everything in terms of travel times. We're gonna look at the walk score. We're gonna look at specific neighborhoods and the advantages and disadvantages of both the two neighborhoods I'd shy away from when moving to Waterloo and the two most beautiful neighborhoods within Waterloo as well. Talk about the Western side of, of Waterloo as well as it's not as well connected as it should be, as if you are on the eastern side of Waterloo, but I'll get into all of that. Let's get started with some of the transportation times and what you're going to be looking at in terms of travel time. So this is the city of Waterloo. It has a population of about 150,000 at this time, a large demographic of students as we have both the University of Waterloo and Laurier University, as they're two large universities. One obviously known for its engineering and IT and Laurier having an excellent business school in addition to other faculties. Moving on. So traveling from Waterloo to Toronto, recording at 11.42 a.m. April 19th. This is a Wednesday, your typical day midweek, and it's going to take you about an hour and 18 minutes to travel there. Depending on where you are, we've used Uptown Waterloo as a starting point. In terms of getting to the airport, you're 55 minutes to Pearson International, and that's going to be about 93 kilometers. Now, moving on to, we do have a airport here in the Waterloo region, and it continues to expand. There's more flights coming in and out of the airport, happening on a more frequent basis, and it is international. There is flights to Mexico during the winter. There are flights to other destinations within Canada, in particular, Calgary, Vancouver, and Halifax, as there's low-cost carriers like Swoop, I believe is flying out of there, and Flair Airlines as well. So this is nice, great convenient access to both Kitchener and Waterloo. It's one of the advantages of living in Waterloo and Kitchener, as you're much closer to the airport than, it, say, you know, the south side of Cambridge. In terms of getting to the eastern border of Ontario, or the eastern border, closest border to the Waterloo region, is the New York State, which is Niagara Falls here. Niagara Falls is a great destination. If you haven't been there, I highly suggest going. It's a great way to get away from the city, enjoy the natural wonder that is Niagara Falls, which is one of the largest waterfalls in the world. And it's quite the destination for a weekend. If you're looking to go to the southern border, it's going to take you about three hours to get there. In terms of a suitable beach, it's going to be very similar to Kitchener's travel time to the local beach here. In my opinion, probably the best beach you can go to within Ontario other than potentially Sandbanks, which is located about three hours away. Absolutely gorgeous, but it's very difficult to get a spot there, a reservation in the summer, as well as you do have... Wasaga as well. But if you are looking to go to the beach, Grand Bend is absolutely beautiful. It's a, a world-renowned beach at this point in regards to how sandy it is, the water, absolutely beautiful. It's about an hour and a half drive. If you're thinking about buying or selling here in the Waterloo region, please fill out the first link in the description. Let's get back to the video. Now, if you aren't taking a car to get around town or walking, you might be taking the LRT. Here in the region, we do have the light rail transit that runs through. This is fairly new development that has happened, and it's the first phase has been completed for several years now. And the LRT connects both Conestoga Mall to Fairview Park Mall, and it runs exactly through the center of both Uptown Waterloo and Downtown Kitchener, with lines splitting between this more densified or this large area of densification where a lot of new construction is happening right now as well as 
the downtown core. This right here is the transit hub, which is in Kitchener, but it's it's right in the middle between downtown Kitchener and uptown Waterloo, as this area right here is Midtown. I believe there will be a lot of new development happening in this area because of the real estate, because of the connectivity, and just the fact that it's between uptown and downtown. And this area here on the map, as we can see, if we go back here, this Midtown area is much more beneficial, I believe, to future buyers as it's away from the universities because this area here has been built up with a lot of student housing and a lot of new development happening towards student housing, right? You have these buildings right here that run along King Street. A lot of this is student housing. A lot of this is student housing. A lot of bars up here conducive to the student population. Coming down further south, uh, towards here, you won't encounter as many students, right? And then finally, you're in Uptown Waterloo. And then there is a lot of stuff heading down towards Midtown. As you can see here, this is the border between Kitchener and Waterloo. This is Waterloo on the north side. This is Kitchener on the south side. I think this is going to be quite a place to develop and you're close to the kw hospital as well which is the largest hospital here in the waterloo region and waterloo itself does not have a hospital they use kw hospital it's just one of the things that you have to get used to is kitchener and waterloo are very similar in many ways and they do use amenities of both cities respectively in regards to the second phase happening this is Cambridge. That looks to be completed potentially in the 2030s. I know it's it's a long way away, but if you have to go from Waterloo to Cambridge, you certainly can via the light rail transit and then going on the adapted bus rapid transit system. Here's the future line, and I believe construction will start in 2028. All right, so let's look at the highway systems that you're going to be traveling on if you are living in Waterloo, Ontario. So the only highway that legitimately runs through the city of Waterloo is Highway 85 here, and it's kind of towards the eastern side of the city, right? It's not quite central because this is uptown right here. You're going to be always driving east unless, of course, you live on the eastern side of the city in places like Kiwanis Park. Uh, this is Rim Park here as well. You're going to be traveling west, which is much closer. But being uh, a Waterlooian, you will be using the other highways here, like Highway 7 and Highway 8, to access the 401. So in order to get from, let's say, Uptown Waterloo to Toronto, you'll be traveling east towards 85, then to 8, and then to 401. And these are legitimate highways that they're not these highways that you find in northern Ontario, which are one or two lanes, these are four to eight lanes at times, depending on where you are. I also want to talk in regards to the travel times within the region. For the most part, it's quite good in Waterloo. Uh, there isn't too much bottlenecks that are happening. The one bottleneck that you have to be cognizant of and be aware of is the mm -hmm. Highway 85 here which is the main arterial road to get around the city. And this here backs up quite a bit throughout the day, especially towards rush hour time. You are most likely going to encounter bumper to bumper traffic at some point between Bridgeport and the north end of Waterloo. If we look at the Waterloo walk score here, zoom in here on the map, in areas that are shaded more green, it's going to be far more walkable, which is this area here. You'll be able to do everything you can possibly imagine in terms of your daily needs within these green spaces, of course, as you venture off from the uptown core to the suburbs located here. You will encounter, obviously, less amenities within a walkable distance. You'll have to own a car if you are living here. In the Beechwood area, Laurelwood area, even on Bridgeport North, even here towards the eastern side, you're most likely going to need a car. But Uptown Waterloo, you won't need a car. you got Waterloo Park here, which is absolutely beautiful. Great place to go. And it's, it's another integral part of Waterloo. 
And to the western side here, you have Laurel Creek Conservation Area, another big lake. Nice outdoor activities in the summer, as well as the winter as well, if you want to go take a walk. Moving on. In terms of places that you should avoid when selecting a suitable neighborhood to look into is Sunnydale. It's this area right here beside Lakeshore Village. Lakeshore Village, again, not the greatest neighborhood, but better than Sunnydale. And that is located here just north of the University of Waterloo's Johnston Research and Technology Department. And in this village here, you're going to have a little bit more crime than most other areas within the region, as well as a large student population. Moving on to the second place I would avoid is also located quite close to the university. It's this area between Weaver Street North and Hazel here. Again, you're going to have a large student population. The homes here aren't well taken care of. As you can, you can tell that uh, students have been living there. They're not essentially your, they're not the most well taken care of homes. And in terms of the best neighborhoods here to look out for in Waterloo, they're both going to be located on the western side of the city, which is Beechwood. Beechwood is absolutely beautiful. A lot of older homes within that neighborhood, that old school money on larger lots, as you can see here. There's a few few pools in the back. There's these right here, Castle Gate. And of course, up until the north here, beautiful homes. Some of the nicest roads are in this area, like Shakespeare Drive, multi-million dollar properties on large lots. Built in the late 1980s for the most part, if you are on the eastern side here. And here is a little bit newer as in terms of potentially the 90s as well. Laurelwood is conveniently located just north of Beechwood. And Laurelwood contains a lot of great schools. If you are looking for neighborhoods that have great schools to choose from, Laurelwood would be your best pick. As well as Vista Hills. But I'll get to Vista Hills as why I don't really care for Vista Hills. And the disadvantages of lifting in Vista Hills as compared to Laurelwood or Beechwood. If you're looking for the best neighborhoods in the city of Waterloo. So moving on here. I really want to take a look at this area here as it's not very well integrated to the city of Waterloo as in regards to the transportation perspective, because a lot of times if you are living here on the western side of the city, these roads, for the most part, this new subdivision, Vista Hills, another great school, Vista Hills Public School, they cannot build into Wilmot Township, which is the beginning of Wilmot as this is Wilmot Line. So as you can see here, this road does not exist. That is illegal. You are not allowed to drive on that road. So if you are living in this area, let's say you bought a new house in the new subdivision of Vista Hills, beautiful, and you want to get to Uptown Waterloo, it's still going to take you 15 to 16 minutes, and you're ha going to have to travel through an entire neighborhood in order to get out of the neighborhood to Herb Street West, because this is quite a long distance between Herb Street West here Wideman Road, that's a few kilometers there where you're, you're not able to access anything else other than the neighborhood here. And there isn't many things other than, you know, beautiful walking trails. There's a lot of forest, but in terms of grocery stores, daily conveniences, you're going to have to leave this neighborhood. It's almost an island in and of itself. As you can see here, this does look like it will eventually lead to Wilmot Line, but it does not because they're not allowed to do so. So they're going to have to build these roundabouts. This is already built up and proceed on to Herb Street West in order to get to Uptown Waterloo. And also the travel times between being on the western side of Waterloo and being on the eastern side of Waterloo in order to get anywhere, like let's say the airport, it's going to be, you know, 10 to 15 minutes longer because you're going to have to catch either Highway 7 here or Highway 8. And this is going through, again, Kitchener. You're going to be going down Iron Needles Boulevard here. This is a very large shopping district area here, as this is Iron Needles Shopping Center. They have a Walmart. They have a cinema. They have Movadi Athletic, my favorite gym here in the Waterloo region. As I alluded to earlier, a lot of people that live within Kitchener and Waterloo traverse both cities quite frequently. As I am living in Kitchener now, I had frequently visited Movadi Athletic, and that is technically in 
Waterloo. And finally, let's get into the new development happening in Waterloo, Ontario. And again, it's going to be a lot on the western side here, as well as a little bit to the north and to the east. But for the most part, it will be this area, as I highlighted before, in Vista Hills, as well as this is Herbsville, which used to be a small community. And in terms of this western corner here, you're always going to be far away from this highway. So that's something to be cognizant of when looking to live in the city of Waterloo is this area here. You are not as well connected as if you were living here or here or even in the city of Kitchener, which is far more well connected as both Kitchener here. You can ac easily access Highway 8 on either side and you have access to the 401. In Waterloo, you only have Highway 85. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got a lot of value from it. And if you did, please hit the like button and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Thank you for watching.